Alright, we're in the Terminal del Norte, bar bar tickets to Guatape, Rapido Ochoa. Jerome the Colombian right here. <laughs> Alright, we're about to get on our bus to Guatape. It was 13,000 pesos. So it's pretty cheaper than if you do it with the hostel. They're gonna charge you a fuckload just for transportation. Right, we made it to the Piedra de Peñol. We're about to hike up there. It's like a sad bunny on the other side. But first we need some traditional food. The restaurant we're about to eat at has an incredible view of Guatape. Colombian countryside always blows my mind. We got some traditional Colombian breakfast, a little bit of eggs, arepa, nice amount of cheese, wow. I'm surprised by that. A little pan de bono. Having a little bit of drone issues. I'm calibrating the IMU right now. Hopefully this works. I really want to fly it with these views. Okay, so my drone isn't working. So that means no amazing views for me. Now I have to walk up. Now we have to walk up to the bad boy right there. It's just massive. 659 steps up to the top of the Pedria de Peñol. We've already crossed 100. At 100 steps, that's how incredible the view already is. Colombian people are never in a hurry. <laughs> we made it to 200. This is the view at 200 steps. How is this compared to Ciudad Perdida? A lot easy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, if you, These steps are well If you don't Ciudad Perdida, you know this is pretty simple and pretty easy on the steps. 300, halfway there. This is the view. We made it to 400 steps. Now the view. It's just getting better and better. Very disappointed I couldn't fly my drone because this is just incredible. There's like tiny little islands with their own legs. 600, this is the view. We're going up to the Mirador right now. The southern, the, no, what is it called? The highest point of the Pedro Peñol to get the best views. All right, we made it. I mean, how do you beat something like this? Videos literally don't do this place justice. And we came here on our own, not with a hostel. And, you know, we already haven't we haven't even spent forty thousand pesos yet on breakfast and the entrance to the Peñol plus the, the transportation here. So I recommend you could do it easily on your own and you just go to and just look at this. Alright, we're on a tuk tuk right now to Guatafe. From there, we're gonna get the boat to La Manuela, Calas Park, Little Finca. The tuk tuk is completely safe. Like, tuk tuk is completely safe. It's only 10,000 from here to Piedra Pinot. And seat belts. To Guatafe. Seat belts. And the seat belts. We're now in the town of Guatape. We're here in the the place where you get the boats to go to Pablo Escobar's little finca in Guatape. Getting the life jackets on. It's about to be a 40 minute boat ride. We paid 100,000 total. And then there we paid 5,000 for the entrance. And I think we only have like 45 minutes there, the lady said. So not that bad for a round trip boat ride. So that's the Fantasy Island. Yeah. If you're with a group of eight people, it's only 200,000 for the little big house there in total. You get the whole island. For the whole 24 hours. Wow. And if you're two of you, it's only 120,000. For the whole island and three of us? For, for I don't know, three to four, I think it's like 150. See that cross is that? Yeah. So where that cross is, there used to be a church and this used to be a town. So this the, there's a town underground, underwater. And so when the, Energy companies bought all this. Um, they obviously turned all this into like you know man-made lakes. So they drowned the town. And then um, in 1992, this it was a drought, and you were able to see the church still. 
And uh, the guys of the energy companies, they're like, yo, fuck it, bomb this shit, put dynamites, and let's drown it completely. And then the priest actually sent for uh, the town to build this little symbol so they could see that this is where there used to be a church of uh, Guatapu. That house right there, that's the last house that, from the original Peñol town. The one that's under water now. That house right there. The red door. The yeah. red door. So it, it's about 235 years old. Yeah. And the man who used to live there, he used to be uh, like a pharmacist. And he would give uh, the drugs to the poor for free. And then he would just charge the rich extra so he could maintain it. And then supposedly, his son killed him because he wanted uh, oh, his inheritance. His, he wanted his inheritance. So he, that's supposedly the story. But the problem was that the guy, he loved women. And so he supposedly had around 36 children. And so his son, oh, who killed him, it. he had to split the entire <laughs> inheritance. As he Manuela, Pablo Escobar's finca in Guatape, right there. So the entrance is 5,000 pesos, so you can see uh, the finca here, which is relatively super cheap. I mean, he definitely had a great view from this finca. Just look at this. I reckon he was living pretty well, no? Pablo knew how to uh, maintain a certain Something lifestyle. Like that. I mean, and so this house used to be the club, so he would just bring all his friends, I guess, and all his women. And he didn't need to go anywhere else, because he had it all here. Wow. Y, y viene para por acá? Es muy bueno, entonces. So, so the club is still open, and everybody from Guatapé who has money just comes here and, and has a good time. When you own it, it and a restaurant's there too. So it's expensive. I assume it's pretty expensive. And this is where he also parked all his like boats and, and jet skis. He built a house for his son. Yeah. A house for, obviously the, the the house is named after his daughter. He built a football uh, field. Um, the tunnels, obviously. Wow, they're really. La construcción demoró siete años la construcción de la propiedad. So everything took seven years to be built for this property. Fue un árbol colombiano, Guayacán. Guayacán. Le gustaba a Pablo por su colorido, los colores amarillo, amarillo, blanco, morado y rosado. Wow. Esos son otros de los árboles, eucaliptos grises, con trigo de Australia. Huh. He brought trees from Australia, Canada. This guy is wow. Yo, he even has a bonsai tree from Japan. Look, this is insane. Are you good? So the, the property, um, the majordomo, which is like housekeeper in Colombia, who had his own house here as well, um, he basically has still the rights to this property. And so he's still battling with, like, with the state to keep this. Because Fair why enough. not? I would, I would. Those king ganan los cinco mil pesos. Wow. So the 5,000 pesos go to him. And this is the property right here, I assume. The main property. Esa es la propiedad principal. Casa principal. Casa principal. El pensado de ellos como tal era inaugurar esta propiedad en diciembre de 1993. ¿Qué sucedió? Nueve meses atrás, el 20 de marzo, de marzo, ingresaron los pepes, sacando a los trabajadores, poniendo la bomba, detonándola y suben a quemar el resto de la propiedad. Los, ¿Quién lo quemó? Los Pepes. ¿Qué es eso? Persiguiendo a Pablo Escobar. Persiguiendo a Pablo. El de Cali, Autodefensas y el Estado colombiano. Yo. <laughs> so, so he was, he was planning on inaugurating this property in, in uh, 1993. Nine months before he inaugurated those Pepes, the people, those pepes, yeah. they, they came through, you know, they bombed this one, and then later on they went over there to finish the rest. Pero por qué no destruyeron la, la, el so club? No, no, ellos más que todo eran la, las casas principales, que era esta y arriba, que era el bar, no, no les interesó. No les interesó. So they didn't, they have no choice. They didn't really care to bomb the, the, the club. Yeah, that there's nothing for them. But this, this was all done by Los Pepes? Yeah. So, so Pablo nice. must have been pissed. Yeah, so the Pepes did a great job of bombing this place. Wow. Huh. This is... Cuartos principales para Pablo, su hijo, su hija. Cuartos para los amigos, para sus trabajadores, los chef, las cocineras, cocina, la sala, alcoba. So kitchen, living room, 
room for his friends in the main room. I mean, this is an insane view of Guatape. Like, this is probably one of the best views. And he owned that house. He owned houses over there for his family. So, I mean, he wasn't really worried if this one got bombed because he was fine. Obviously, since we're near man-made lakes, you should always have a pool as well. So, <laughs> just in case, just in case you can't get a swim, here's a nice little pool and a sauna as well. A sauna, a Turkish bath, and then the security tower. This is not hot. In this is the little barbecue area. Barcelona, Barcelona. Barbecue area. Kill a pig, invite 300 people. You'll have a good time. This, this is the Bobby. Oh, a little bathroom right here. Now we're going up his security little, tower. Little where he had probably a couple snipers watching. Nothing serious, right? <laughs> Taking it real easy on the security deck. Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. Yeah, I don't think there's a town that competes with Guatapé as far as beauty. So this is the kitchen, or obviously what it used to be. But even the kitchen has some incredible views. If you, if you just make it some steak here, if you're making some steak here, I'm sure you'd be inspired to make the best steak in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, damn. So that house over there was his sister's, and we passed by his dad, his brother's, which is right over there. But fucking views, oh my god. Alright, so we're at a restaurant called Parilla Bar, Mirador del Lago. We're on the third floor, we have an incredible view with this little bar right here. We're about to order some nice a nice lunch for all the activity we've done today. We've done a lot. We've done a fair share of activities, yeah. And like I said, if we would have came with a hostel, we would have been rushed. We would have really wouldn't appreciate all the things we've done so far because we just would have been a big group. We're waiting for him. We're in the square of Guatapé right now, and like always, any square in Colombia, there's always a church. Very different architecture. It has a <laughs> Like a dark red color and some animals. That's the cool guy. That's the cool guy. This dog's trying to get into the fountain. Yo, where are you going? I feel like should we help him or? Yeah, help him out. No, I'll throw him in there. I'm not gonna throw him in, obviously. So far, Guatapé is very colorful. The architecture is very preserved. It's a very clean town. I love it. I mean, the landscape with all the lakes, it's just extremely beautiful. I would love to buy a finca out here when I'm older. Very colorful. And they, all the houses have like these little portraits on the outside. This one has some instruments. This one has some flowers. This has a man singing or I think that's a saxophone. The ambulance is trying to get by but he hasn't been able to. Okay, this house is beautiful. It's definitely restored, I think. More, more paintings. 